thanks again for an opportunity to be in the house of the Lord and most of all to, to be the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. To be the house of the Lord. I was just praying and seeking the Lord and it, it always amazes me how God began to speak. And I, boy, I tell you, it changed my life when I began to first start hearing God speak to me. Because it was just like your conscience out of the realm of your body, it just makes a difference because now you hear something in your conscience and you're wondering, what is this? I mean, directionally, how does, how does this line up with me at the very moment of what you're hearing at the time you hear? And God is speaking right now. He's speaking right now. And as I was getting into the shower the other day, and, and before I got in, it's on Wednesday before I even came up for the Wednesday midweek service, I prayed and asked him, God, so I'm asking you early, God, what is the message for tonight? Do you know? I said, do you know? That's what I asked God. Do you know what it is? <laughs> I imagine that. And then all of a sudden, I just heard decisions, decisions. I said, decisions? He said, you're making a decision now to trust in me that I can give you the word. Do I know the word? <laughs> I mean, do I know what the word is? And he said, where do, we, where do you go from here if I gave you the word? Decisions, decisions. And so that kind of hit me, kind of hit me hard. So I, I, I started listening to the Lord, and he started directing me. And as he directed me, I mean, when I did sit down to pen it, to put in the uh, PowerPoint and all, the Lord began to show me directionally which way he wants me to go with this message. So uh, he, as always, we start the service off with, we've already done prayed and had our worship. We start the service off with uh, some this moment. And uh, my wife has a Psalms for us here. Go ahead, honey, with your Psalms. It's from Psalms 98, and it says, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy, his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. First into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. Psalms 98. 98. Now you think about everything she said. Let. Let the earth. Let the sun. Let the people. That's a decision. That's a decision that you have to make. I can let you do it, and you will desire to do it, and God desires you to do it, but everyone has to make that decision to do what they need to do. Where do I go from here? Now, I didn't have where do we go, but I want you to make it, I want to make it personal. Where do I go from here? When you get ready to make a decision, where do I go from here? And this is going to be something that the Lord ministers to us. And here's what's so important to me. I wasn't even thinking, I knew God gave me the direction, gave me the word, gave me the title, and started ministering to me. But as I was doing my you version devotions along the way, guess what? God began to speak to me in confirmation of what this message is going to be. So let me read to you a prayer, a prayer. I'm going to read to you a prayer, but I'm going to say it in a properly manner. A prayer that I prayed, that I read in one of my U version devotions. This man prayed this prayer at the end of the devotion. It's five day devotion. And after the fifth day, he prayed this, one. and it just confirmed the message that God has gave me. Because everything you hear in this prayer is going to be talked about today, and it's just wow, awesome, wildly awesome how God does that. Here's what He says: Dear God, thank you for loving me so much that you gave me the Holy Spirit, to stay within me. He teaches me about you and Jesus. He encourages me through strength, building difficulties. He suggests to me how to emulate Jesus, and he corrects my thoughts by words and actions when needed. He shows me the opportunities that you are placing in my path. 
that suggests how you would like me to respond. He reminds me just how great you are. Again, I thank you, God, for loving me so much. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now you think about that. When I read that, I thought, wow. That's just what the Lord is saying to me. He says, Where is he? What is he saying that to everybody right now? What is he saying that all across the nation, all across the world? You know, when God is speaking in some areas, the chronological area, he might be speaking this because this is what's going on in the spiritual realm. But in some places, he may be speaking this and speaking the same thing over here because that's what we need to hear. So when I begin to think about that, I begin to know that I face decisions every day. Emotionally, physically, when I get ready to eat and I ate early, I need to make a decision. Do I really need to eat or do I just want to eat because I'm sitting here and bored a little bit? That's a decision. Physically, I need to make a decision that my body needs to not have anything calorie rise right this moment. Mentally, or most of all, spiritually. Making decisions spiritually. Based on the knowledge of the word. I want you to hear that because that's what the Lord began to minister to me. We make decisions based on our thought patterns. And our thoughts is based on the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom that we've had or we have that we walk through other situations in our life. When Jesus spoke this in John chapter 5 and verse 39 and 40, he said this. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. In verse 4 he said, and you will not come to me that you might have life. And I begin to ponder that in my mind, in my heart. What does that mean? That means that there are people that read the Bible every day. And they'll say, they get bored because they say, I don't understand but you know what? You're not reading the Bible for understanding in preface to just understanding. But you're reading the Bible that you can get a directional closeness with God. That's why you read the Bible. You don't read it just for understanding. But you do read to understand because he will start giving you understanding. Because 1 John 2 and 27 said that you don't need no one to teach you. That the anointing will teach you. That the anointing will teach you. But yet, decisions, decisions, don't just read the Bible just to say you read, or you read a chapter today, or you read a chapter every day. What you get out of it? What God is speaking to you right now? Because God is speaking. And so decisions, decisions, the whole Christian life is about how we can yield to the Spirit, and watch this, and operate according to God's will, in which is His living word. That's His living word. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10, when he talked to the disciples about praying, and he said, how do we pray? And he said, pray on this man. Our Father, we are in heaven. How do we be thy name? Then he said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And that's why we pray. We read because we kind of interact in intimate, intimacy to build intimacy with the Lord, but yet we are to pray that the heavenly realm be moved in the earthly realm and the kingdom of heaven be at hand. At hand. Wherever you are, we're at hand reach. That's where you want the kingdom of heaven to be manifested. So how do we seek the Lord in real life experiences? That's something we're going to get into here as we read the Bible. When you read the Bible and you read a story of Gideon or of uh, Barak and of whomever you're reading of uh, in the era they lived in, the time they lived in, they either knew the Lord or didn't know the Lord. They either made decisions correctly or they made decisions they have to reap the havoc of. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us in manifesting him, Himself. If you see me do something and I did it and it bring the, the natural realm to the supernatural realm, you knew it wasn't me it's because true. it was God. And so that's what he wants us all to do, to manifest his will in the supernatural in the earth today. 
And so let's get into the Word of God here. And um, I wanted to preface all that because this is what the Lord said. First scripture God gave me was this scripture here. Very powerful Word of God. It said, for, Hebrews 4 and 12, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. That means the soul and the spirit is going to pierce, divide asunder, the soul and the spirit. He said, and of the joints and the matter, and it's a discerner, say that with me, discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the word of God is what's going to be discerning your thoughts and your intentions. If you put the word in and you put it in because you're, inti- you're seeking for intimacy with God, your decisions are going to be turned out more correctly because the Word of God is going to align itself to your thoughts and your intentions, and He's going to align you to make the correct decisions. So, when we think about that, we will go back to the Old Testament. I like to give you the Old Testament revelation of a New Testament demonstration. And that's why I thank the Lord for the Old Testament. People say, well, we don't have to go by the Old Testament. Well, the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 15 that the, the things that are written before time was written for our learning that we might have patience and hope through the Scripture. In other words, the things you're reading about the people in the Bible in the Old Time, in the Old Testament, there was things that teaches you that they was men and women just like we are, but yet they didn't have what we have, the the in the abiding presence of the Lord to abide in us. They didn't have that then, but we do now. So that gives us an advantage, if you would. So let's look back at Elijah. We're going to talk about one of my favorite Old Testament characters who had a walk according to the voice of God. When the God spoke to Elijah, Elijah was able to move because God's voice came to him. And in reference to us walking according to the reference of the Lord, his word. And his spirit is what leads us and guides us. So, 1 Kings uh, 17, 1 through 15. Let's read this right here. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these days but according to my words. And I began to search all this out as I was putting this together because I wanted to know exactly what was going on. There was a famine in the land. And there was no water. It hadn't rained in a long time. So the Bible says in verse 2, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying. Guess what? Every time the word of the Lord comes to you, he's saying. He's saying something to you. This is what he said. Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And I'm going to just tell you what you're just looking at here. God told Elijah to go by the brook Cherith. And I look up the word Cherith, and the word Cherith references all the way back to atonement. Atonement and commitment. So when we think about that in essence to what the Lord was telling him, he said, I'm bringing a covenant to you right now. Go to the brook cherubim, the covenant. This is the covenant. And I'm going to command ravens to come and feed you now. Now you watch this. In verse uh, Five says, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. That's what you got to do when you're making good decisions. Do what is according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherubim, that is before Jordan, and, and, the, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass that after a while, he had to stay there for quite a while now, that the brook dried up because there wasn't any rain, because there hadn't been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, now listen, if you had a brook, and you know God sent you to the brook, you made a decision to follow God, you go to the brook, and the 
Ravens bring you bread in the day and bread in the evening, and you're drinking from the brook. God is taking care of you. He's got you. Now, when the brook starts to dry up, you're going to start covering your ear now. Lord, this brook is drying up, and you told me to stay here. How long do you want me to stay here? That's why the message was decisions, decisions. What do I do now? What do I do from here? I'm sure Elijah was talking to the Lord before the word of the Lord came to him when he saw that brook starting to get kind of dry. He said, Lord, there ain't going to be no water here much. This is just me giving my animation of it. He can say, Lord, it ain't going to be no water in this brook here for long. What am I going to do then? Well, the word of the Lord came to him in verse 8. Now watch this. Arise, he said, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, in other words, pay attention. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And guess what? God commanded the ravens. Now he's commanding the widow. You know what? God commanded right now something to go on in your life that's sustaining you right now. He's commanding it. But watch this, because the Bible says right here, he commanded the widow woman to sustain thee. That word sustain there means to keep him and to measure him. I begin to read that and stay there and begin to measure him. Figuratively, to maintain in various senses. In various senses, God is sustaining you right now. He's nourishing you. He's being present with you. He's guiding you. And he's making provisions. Exactly what he was doing when he realized you right there. So he's mm -hmm. got to make decisions that's representing that I'm honoring God for what he's doing in my life. I'm honoring God because I know he's got me. Because he's commanded something here. He's commanded something here. He's commanded the raven. Now watch this. He commanded the widow. Now I begin to study this out. Now watch this as we get into this. Verse 10 said, So he arose and he went to Zephyr. And then when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. Now do you think that when he walked up and saw that woman gathering sticks, that that was the woman that he knew that when the word of the Lord came to him, that he knew that that was the widow woman? You think he knew that? I don't know. I just pondered on that when I was reading it. He came to the city of gate, the gate there of Zarephath, and there this widow woman. It was a woman gathering sticks, but the Bible said it was the widow woman that God told him to go, and he had commanded her to sustain me. It gets better in here. This is decisions. Here we are, Elijah, going into here, and he said right here, the B part of verse 10. The widow woman was gathering there, was there gathering the sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. You may have heard this story, but this is different from what the Lord is saying. He always preaches according to the design and destiny of the time. He said, Fetch me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. First of all, he asked for something to drink because the brook had dried up. And I don't know how far it was that he had to walk to Zarephath, but as that long journey was walking, he didn't have no water. So as he approaches the city gate, there the woman gathering stick, alas, he said, bring me some water. Then he said, while you had it, just bring me a morsel of bread. And watch this, it gets better. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. Now you hear this? She said, as the Lord thy God liveth. Automatically, if God had already commanded the woman to sustain him, automatically you see the picture that her decision was to do what the Lord had done, called her to do in her heart. She said, I have not a cake. But she first honored the Lord. You know, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am given two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Now, what kind of thinking was she doing? She was thinking, as the Lord and her God that liveth in her life, but yet she was down to Nothing but a little meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. 
but yet she didn't realize what was going on because the decision that God had gave to Elijah was bringing the provisions for God's decision on her life. Watch this. In verse uh, 13, he said, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Because he could tell she was fearful that she's just going to have that little meal, make that little bread with that cruise of oil, and then she's going to eat and die. He said, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me there uh, a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after make, and after make for thee and for thy son. In other words, she said she had just enough to make for her and her son. But Elijah put a, a puzzle in there with her and said, first you make it for me. Then you make it for you and your son. She, can you imagine her thinking, am I going to have enough to do that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I only had enough for me and my son. But now you're telling me to make it for you first? Let's just think about what's going on in the woman's head. But she said, as the Lord liveth, so she acknowledged the Lord. So decisions, decisions. Where did I go from here? Now she can imagine what she thought. Where did I go from here? He's asking me to make this for him first. And I got my son in here. He's hungry and I'm hungry. Where do I go from here? It gets better. The last two verses says this. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon the earth. And it hadn't rained in a while at that time. That's right. So if Elijah spoke this out of his mouth, and she heard Elijah say this, and God had told Elijah to go to the place in Zarephath, that he had a widow there to sustain him, Elijah was encouraged, I'm sure. But was a woman encouraged? Because she knew it hadn't rained. And this is what she said in verse 15. Well, this is what she done. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat. How many days? Eat. Many days. Decision. Decision. Are you in a place now that you know that God has told you to do something? You know that God is carrying you? You know that God is sustaining you? You know that God is making provisions for you? You know that God is guiding you? You know that God is... Is, is measuring you. He's measuring you to see how much faith you have. He's measuring you. Now here's the thing. And we stopped at verse 15, but from 16 to 24, the barrel of meal didn't waste. That's right. And the cruise didn't fail. According to the word of the Lord that Elijah spoke. And it came to pass, though, after all these things, that the, the woman's son fell sick. And it was a sickness the Bible said was sore. That his breath left him. And she said, Elijah, after that, she saw her son was sick. She said, O oh, thou man of God, art thou coming to me to call my sins in remembrance? Now, here her thinking is. She was thinking, Are you coming to me and call my sins in remembrance and slay my son? Elijah said, Give your son to me. He took him, he took him out of her bosom, he carried him up in the loft, and where, where, where he abode, and he laid him on up on the bed, and he cried out. This is what Elijah cried out. He knew who he, where his help came from. He knew his decision making was all according to what God was going to do. He cried out, "O oh Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow of whom I sojourned by slaying her son?" He stretched himself upon the child three times. Yes, he and he cried unto the Lord, O oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And the Bible said, Elijah took the child and brought him down to the woman, to the chamber, into the house, delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, Thy son living. Yes. And here's what verse 24 said. And the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this, I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy, in thy mouth is true. Now think about what she just said. How did she, knew, how did she know that Elijah was a man of God? 
because he carried the boy upstairs, asked God the question, laid on the, she didn't know all was going on upstairs, but she knew he was a man of God. And she was supposed to be sustaining Elijah. Hallelujah. Decisions, decisions. She knew that he was a man of God, and the word of the Lord was in his mind was true. Because when he gave him her, her son back, he was alive. And so I want you to get a visual of that. The woman said on the now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Is the word of the Lord in your mouth truth by the decisions you make, by you hearing God? The Bible said it. That Elijah heard the Lord. Elijah done just what he said. That word truth there, I mean certainty. He had certainty in his mouth because of the decisions he made. He knew that he was trustworthy according to what the Lord told him to do. He went to a brook and waited on a raven to feed him and give him bread. And, uh, if God told you to go down by your back of your shed there and a squirrel's going to bring you a pecan. And you thought, okay, a squirrel? And there you are sitting there and sitting there thinking, is the squirrel going to really come? And all of a sudden, a uh, a, a nut drop on your head, a pecan drop on your head, and you get it, and you look up, and you don't see no squirrel, but you hear some rambling in the, in, the, in the leaves up there. You know God sustains you. Decisions, decisions. Where did I go from here? Always, God is carrying you, leading you, guiding you, sustaining you, because he wants the truth in your mouth. He wants the truth in your mouth. That's sureness. Reliability and faithfulness as spoken out your mouth. You know, and then one definition says that word truth means a divine instructions. Every time you follow God, you follow divine instruction. The truth of His ethical word is leading you according to what He wants you to do. That word truth there, the root word comes from. The Hebrew word aman, it means to build up or to support. So the truth is building you up and supporting you right now. If you're walking in the truth, it's building you. And it also means to foster as a parent. The truth is what's fostering you as a parent. It's leading you and guiding you. It's your ears. It's your eyes. The truth is what leads you. Jesus said it like this in John 17, in verse 17, he said, sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is truth. Proverbs 23 and 23 said, buy the truth and sell it not. That's how we are making our decisions, based on the truth. In chapter 18, uh, we just had 17, for the sake of time, I didn't, I didn't put it all in there, but in chapter 18, the word of the Lord came to Elijah again. I got the first three verses. It said, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go shoot thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Remember what he said in that last uh, chapter 8, uh, 17, uh, that, that there wouldn't be no rain until, well, she said that the cruise of oil and oil would not, would last until it, it came to rain. So we know that it was, this was coming to fruition of what was happening what she told, what the Lord had told him in chapter 17, that that cruise of oil and that barrel of meal was, was going to last until it rained. And right here, he came to his path. He said, go show thyself to Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. And watch this right here. Verse 2, he said, Elijah went and showed himself unto Ahab. Now see, when God speaks, well, your decision is to do what he said to do. And there was a sore famine in the Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was his servant, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. Now those first three verses, I want you to get in your mind. God told Abraham, excuse me, Abraham, told Elijah to go to Ahab, and after he did, he told him he was going to, he was going to send rain, and when he went to him, he knew that Ahab called his, his, his governor and sent him out to him catch up with, with uh, Elijah because God's plan was all in the making of that particular thing going on. 
So Ahab, excuse me, Elijah meets Ahab's servant. In verse 3 through 15, and all the way up to 16, Elijah was proving himself to be the servant of the Lord. But when we get to verses 20 through 24 of this chapter, the Bible teaches us this. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Now he went and talked to Obadiah, and I left this out for the sake of time. He went and talked to Obadiah. Let me give you a little catch up there. He went and talked to Obadiah, the king's servant and governor, and spoke with Obadiah. And Obadiah, he told Obadiah, go and tell King Ahab that Elijah is here. And he said, if I go and tell him that you're here, you're not going to speak to him? He said, no, I'm speaking to you. He said, if I tell him you're not going to speak to him, the king will kill me. He said, well, no, you just go ahead and tell him that I'm here. And then he came up, and this is what he told him. He asked him, he said, are you the one that's shaking Israel? And he said, no, I ain't shook Israel. And I gave you all that because I left out that in the verses 1, uh, 3 through 15, 16. And then 20 through 24 says this. So Ahab said unto all the children of Israel, because as he opened out, was talking to Elijah, he told him that Ahab had everything going on around that Samaria there. And Elijah, verse 21 says, Elijah came unto all the people, and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Now what he's saying is all these people in that time followed after the king. And the king Ahab was one of the most wicked kings there was, he was. in that day. He was a wicked king. So they followed him, and they had havoc in their lives because they wasn't following the true and living God. That's why God sent Mr. Elijah to them. But they were serving Baal. Baal was a Phoenician god. Was a was a idol god mm -hmm. that they idolated. He was a Phoenician god. But verse twenty two said, "Then said Elijah unto the people, when they didn't answer him a word, when he asked them, how long do you halt between two decisions? Ask yourself that. You ain't got to ask it out loud, but just ask yourself. When you got two decisions, how, how are you going to decide what you're going to do? How long are you going to halt between two opinions? You got to make a decision. Make a decision." According to the word of the Lord. And the Bible said, when Elijah told him, he said, And I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet of 450 men. Now, here's the thing. This story right here goes on and on. And I try to uh, keep it in the text. Verse 23 through 24 says this. And let them, therefore, give us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces. And lay it on the wood, and put on no fire on it. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire on it. He's just saying, we don't determine you've not been serving God, and you in Havoc, and you ain't making no decisions. You got two opinions in your in your mental perceptions now. You're not making any decision. You didn't even answer me. He said, well, Who God are you serving? What decisions are you making? Where are you going from here? I sum all that up to say this. Verse 24, he said, And you do all this, and you call ye upon the name of your God, and I call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. Yes, and all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. See, the first thing he didn't answer a word when he asked them, If you halt between two opinions, they couldn't answer. But when he said, Let's get you a bull out there, and let's build up this altar, and let's put it on the uh, uh, Alter there, don't put no fire on it, and let God who answers by fire be God. I'm going to tell you right now, the things you're dealing with, the things you're going through, the trials and tribulations that you've been experiencing, let the God that you know answer by fire. And that means he'll consume all these things because he's got you. He's sustaining you, and he's commanded things in your perspective to be where they are right now, to bring you to the next level, to bring you to the next level. He's sleeping. 
you might go, need to go and awaken him. So Elijah was just taunting them a little bit because he knew that they, they, their God wasn't God. You got to be able to know in the decisions you're making, your God is God. But then he cried out and told them they, they were cutting themselves and all manner with knives and lancets and all, and blood was gushing out on them. It came to pass that at midday, uh, Elijah, they prophesied until all they offered until the evening sacrifices, and there was neither voice nor any answer and nor any regard of what they was doing. And Elijah said, Come near unto me, in verse 30. He said, All the people came near to Elijah, and he repaired the altar up that it was broken down. And he said, he, he took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of Israel. That's right. 12 is the number of government, perfect government. And he made a trench about the altar, and a, and, and a great, he took two measures of seed, and he put uh, the, uh, the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces. And he laid him on the wood, and he said, fill four barrels of water. He said, pour it all on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And they did that. He said, do it a second time. And they did that. And he said, do it a third time. And they did that. And then the water ran about all the altar and filled all the trenches where it was. And then in 18 through 39, I mean 36 through 39, this is what happened. It came to pass at the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came here and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day, decisions, decisions, that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. You hear that? Elijah saying, I've made decisions according to your word, God. I've done everything you told me to do according to your word. I want us to get that. Decisions, decisions. Where do I go from here? In verse 37, he said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. And you know why he said that? Let, that, let the people know? Because the woman that Seraphim, Zarephim, she said, Surely I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is truth in thy mouth. And he was wanting the people that he was standing in front of her to get the same thing. In verse 40 through 46, Elijah took all the prophets of Baal and let not one of them escape. And he took them and he brought them down to the brook of Kishon, and he slew every one of them. That's right. 450 prophets. And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. And Ahab went and he ate and drank, and Elijah went up the top of Carmel, and he, and he cast himself down upon the earth. And he put his face between his knees. And then he began to pray. Remember when I said, Well, I go about prayer? And he said, His servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, What do you see? He said, Nothing. He said, Go. Uh, again, seven times. And he went the seven times. He said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chair and get up, and, and the rain is going to stop. And then it came to pass there, according to the scripture, that the heaven was black and the cloud and the wind came up, and that great rain came. It hadn't rained in a long time. Mm -hmm. And he went to Jezreel. And verse 46 says this. Uh-oh, I'm going, I'm going too fast. Uh-oh, sorry. Verse 46, he said, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran before Ahab to entrance of Jezreel. Because he had done, done all that because the word of the Lord spoke to him and he done according to the word of the Lord. Decisions. Decisions. But in chapter 19, let me try to wrap this up. In chapter 19, I told you what he done in 17. He added brook cherubim the, by the waiters bringing him food until the brook dried up. Then he heard God say and he done a decision on what God had said and he went into Zarephath and the woman 
fed him there. And then he laid on the young woman's son, and the young woman's son came back alive, and he had no life in it. He done all that in 17. In 18, he killed all the 450 prophets, and he built an altar, put a bullock on it, and the fire consumed the prophet, the, the, the prophet, the Fire consumed the altar and everything that was on it, and sucked up the water and everything in. All this was happening. Why? Because of the decisions he was making, because he heard the voice of the Lord. I want you to get that point before we go on to get ready to close this out, because I want you to hear this. In 1 Kings 19 now, this is what happened. Ahab went and told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. In other words, she said, By tomorrow, at this time, and night, you're going to be dead. Verse 3 said, And when he saw that, he arose and he went for his life, and he came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. And all this time, he didn't doing all this stuff that the Lord told him to do. And he listening to the Lord, hearing the Lord, and doing what God's direction was according to the Spirit of the Lord all this time. In chapter 19, when Elijah, uh, when Ahab's wife heard about it, this is what happened. Verse 4 said, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came and sat down under the juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Now, can you imagine what he started thinking? I start pondering about this. What was he thinking now? He didn't kill all them prophets, laid on a young man, and he came back alive? He didn't ate the brook, trusting in the Lord? Drink, drink water from the brook and ate of the bread that the ravens brought. He done all of that by the decisions he made directed by the Lord. And then right here, he gets into a place that Ahab's wife, Jezebel, sent out a letter to him, and he gets so fearful, he runs for his life. And when you read this story right here for the sake of time, you read this story, the Lord... Ahab went into a cave. In 1 Kings 19. He went into a cave from 9 to 14. And he was in this cave. And he called on the Lord. And the Lord came into him and asked him, What was he doing in that cave? What you doing in here, Elijah? What kind of decision you made now? After all that I've been doing and been walking with you. And Ahab, excuse me, Elijah sought the Lord. He saw him, and he went and stood before, and he's looking for the Lord to come again. And the Bible said the Lord told, told him to go out and stand in the mountain. And he's going to pass by, and then he can look at him, look for him. And when he did that, he tried in a, with a strong wind. The wind got to hitting the mountains and all, and the Lord wasn't in the wind. He looked for him in an earthquake, and the earth got to quaking, and he wasn't in the earthquake. Then he looked for him in the fire, fire, and he wasn't in the fire. And guess where the Lord was? A still, small voice. That's the decisions you're making today. Your decision should always be made to bring glory and honor to the Lord. How? In a still, small voice. God is speaking to you. And let's close this out here with a few scriptures here I want to share with you. Our decision should always be made to bring glory to the Lord. Well, how did I do that, Brother James? I'm glad you asked. First scripture, this is a scripture we all familiar with. But Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. That's how you make decisions. You don't lean to your own understanding. How, why? Because in all your ways you acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. I like the NIV version because the NIV version said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. And He will make your path straight. He'll keep you on the straight and narrow if you trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's the thing, you got to trust in Him with all your heart. 
Most people quote the scripture out of Jeremiah 29 and 12. They say, I know the plan that I have for you, says the Lord, plans are good and not of evil, that I can bring you to a expected end. That's the one they quote all the time. But they don't use verse 13 where it says, and if you seek me, you'll find me, if you seek me with all of your heart. Yeah. That's, the peak, that's the key of decision making on a day-to-day -day basis, trusting in the Lord. Well, what if you lack wisdom? What if I don't know, Brother James? Well, James chapter 5, excuse me, James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraid is not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven by the, with the wind, and tossed. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In how many ways? All of them. So if you lack wisdom, ask God. But then you got to be ready to hear what God is saying. And then you got to be ready to move and wait or not when he tells you to do something. Move according to the will of the Lord. Now, you may ask to yourself, why do I have to ask for wisdom from God, Brother James? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I got the answer. Here's why you got to ask from, from, from the wisdom of God. Because 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why. You need to ask wisdom of God because you can doctrinize it. It can reprove you. It can correct you. It can give you instructions for righteousness. And you'll be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What does he call you to do? He's commanded somebody right now to do something today that knows the Lord. He's commanded them to do it. It's going to benefit you. Just like you did with the woman at Zarephath. He commanded her to feed to take care of life, to sustain him is what the word says. So as we live and encounter different people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis, entities, personalities, attitudes, and responsibility, our responsibility is to show them the truth. Matthew chapter, uh, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 15 says this right here. The heart of the prudent giveth knowledge. And the ears of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift making room for him and bringeth him before great men. Like I said, somebody today out there is waiting for you to bring before them a wise, knowledgeable response of who you are according to the will of the Lord. And then Matthew chapter 16 and 26 says this, But well, what does it profit a man he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Of what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So the decisions that people are making, they're making them based upon the outcome that they want in life. Because the decisions they make. You're always just a decision away from a breakthrough. Just one decision away from a breakthrough. It's just decisions, decisions. Where do I go from here? Let me share with you about Joshua. When he was challenged by Israel to commit to the Lord, and he summoned all the Israel's elders and rulers and judges and leaders, and he appeared before them, and Joshua told all the people in the distant past from their ancestors that lived in the Euphrates River, he told them, he said, they worship gods on the other side, but I took the father Abraham from the Euphrates and brought him into the land of Canaan, and I made a descendants numerous. He made the descendants of ours numerous. And he said to Isaac and Isaac said to Jacob and Jacob said to Esau this is what the Lord has done. You determined to not only do it for yourself but also for your children and your children's children. That's why you make decisions. And this is what the Bible says that Joshua said. And if, if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of the fathers that served that was on the other side of the flood, 
for the God of the Amorite in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the decision you need to be making today for you and your house to serve the Lord. Not only for you, but for your children and your children's children. That scripture in the NIV, I like the NIV version, it said it, Joshua 24 and 15 said, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choosing yourself this day when you serve, whether the gods of your ancestors and the serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you're living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Decisions, church. Decisions. So let me close this thing with this. We look at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you hear the word, when you read the word, you have to apply the knowledge that he gets from the word. If you despise wisdom and instruction, you become a fool. That's why it's so important that we make our decisions through prayer and thanksgiving. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8 says this. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that your request be made known unto God. And what? The peace of God which passing all understanding should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I hope we get this today because in closing, I want to say this right here. Someone needs to hear this message today. You might say to yourself, somebody needs to hear what Brother James said today, but here's what I got to say according to what you might be thinking. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 7 said, Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently upon for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way, because of a man who brings wicked devices to pass. Don't even think about somebody else. Think about you. Think about you. Because in Proverbs chapter 13, last verse, 22 21 says this He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursues sinners, but the righteous good shall be repaid. I want you to hear what it says in the NIV version. In the NIV version, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffer harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. Trouble pursues the sinner. Even, even Elijah, we talked about him in 1 Kings 17, 18, and 19. James talked about Elijah in chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Here's what James said. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth for a space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Hallelujah. Decisions, decisions. Where do I go from here? Are you praying? Are you seeking? Are you leaning not to your own understanding? Are you acknowledging him? Are you being still before the Lord and waiting patiently on him? Are you being not anxious for anything, but letting your prayer and your petition be made with God with thanksgiving? Because you already know that the decision you're making is based upon his word, his will. You know that you're beginning to discern according to the word of God. It's key if we're going to make decisions and bring honor and glory to the Lord our God and our Savior. To lead us, to direct us, and to fulfill the purpose that he has for our lives. Hallelujah. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Some of it are a little bit slow because I didn't have some of the scripture written and I had to kind of give you the play on it. But here's what I want you to take from this today. It's it. Your decide, your decision is to make a decision from the Lord. Make sure you watch it with the word of God. Make sure you trust. Make sure you have faith. Make sure you stand steadfast and immovable and always abounding in the word of the Lord. 
because he will break the path. He will sustain you, provide for you, and take you from faith to faith, from strength to strength, precept upon precept, line upon line. He'll carry you, he'll direct you, and he'll keep you. Hallelujah. James Buckley, I thank you for watching. If you're watching here on Facebook, leave me some comments and concerns, questions if you have them. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the notification button that you'll always never miss another teaching or another ministry that the in this presence is doing. And as always, if you want to do anything, pray for this ministry. Pray for this ministry. And I appreciate it. I thank you in advance. If you ever want to give, you got three different ways. Face in the place, in the bowl, cash app, IHP ministry, or PayPal, paypal.me, father slash IHP ministry. To God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. So be it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.